So it's been a while since I've done a shark pond video, and I've actually had this shark pond, which I call affectionately my redneck hot tub, for about 10 years now. So I figured now would be a good time to just give a quick update and show you how I moved it from one side of my house to the other. Now, over the years, I've housed lots of different species of sharks, and I've had multiple different types of sharks in this pond. They've all done extremely well. Um, there obviously is a limit of how many sharks and of what species you can keep in something like this, but it served very well for the purposes that I've needed it over the past 10 years. So this is a 300 gallon Rubbermaid stock tank. I used to have a reverse sump. Um, you can watch how that worked in the video that I'm going to link in the description of this one. I decided against it because I knew that when I had moved the pond that that wasn't going to be its permanent home yet within that one room in my house. I knew that this room was going to be the permanent home that I was going to have it in, in this house. I only have two sharks in here at the moment. Um, they're full grown, they get along great, and my canister filter, which we'll talk about later, has done a great job of keeping everything the way that it should be. There's very good water parameters. Everything's been great, and these two sharks have absolutely been thriving in here. So the first thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything in this room that could rust or just be in the way. So I went ahead and hired a handyman and he removed this mirror with me off of the wall. We then had to sand the wall. There was a lot of glue behind the mirror when we took it off. Once the wall was primed, I had my electrician come in and they were able to swap out the current um, outlets with GCFI outlets. These are just to protect the electrical system in my home and since there is a lot of water. Once you get used to having a large system like this, you're not as prone to spilling water, but it's still a possibility. So you just want to make sure that everything's protected and everything is safe for you, for them, for the equipment, for your home, anywhere that you're going to be keeping a pond like this. So once all that was done, I went ahead and finished painting the wall in here and I also had some LED lights installed on the crown molding in this room. That wasn't really a necessity, but the species that I keep are mostly nocturnal. In captivity, I've noticed that they don't necessarily have a schedule per se, but I do know that they don't like bright lights and they don't like it shining directly on them. So I figured this way I could have light in the room that won't be disruptive to them, and it looks pretty cool too. Once all of that was done, it was time to start disassembling everything. So here's the room that I had them in before I moved them. So this room was intended to be a living room, it has a really nice big window, which is great for people, but not great for sharks. I did notice that while the pond was in this room, I would sometimes during the summer or even during the winter, I would have some temperature control issues in here. So I went ahead and got these two tower fans and they allowed me to keep the temperature stable within the pond. I also got one of these plastic storage cabinets. And while it's not the neatest at the moment that I'm showing it to you, um, it's great. I can put so many things in here Nothing gets ruined that's on the actual cabinet system because it's plastic, which is really nice for saltwater equipment. It's helped keep me organized. I'm able to store all kinds of things in here. This thing was like $99, um, and I got it from either Home Depot or Lowe's. I can't remember exactly, but they did deliver it to the house for me, which was really nice. So these are the two current occupants. This is my horn shark. His name is Link, and this is Lola. Lola's a white spotted bamboo shark and I actually rescued her from really nice people in Lakeland. She had been kind of moved from one place to the next trying to provide the best home for her that they possibly could. When I became aware that she needed a more permanent home, I drove up to Lakeland with my dad and got her and brought her home. And she's been here ever since and she's very happy and healthy and she's absolutely beautiful. If you want to know Link's story, I'll go ahead and leave the link to his video in this video's description so that you can learn all about how I got Link. Once the room was prepped, I went ahead and took two tape measures and I put them in a crisscross like how you see on the floor right there. And then I went ahead and taped it. So this way I knew where the pond would ultimately sit. This pond is five by six. I wanted to make sure that there was enough room for me to walk around it. I wanted to make sure there was enough room for my cabinet, for my other cabinet that I keep the air pumps and some other things in. Um, I wanted to make sure that there was enough room for my water change equipment, so like my garbage can and a bunch of extra different buckets that I use for different things. And I also wanted to make sure that wherever the canister filter was going to be, that I had access to it so that it was easy for me to maintain. So the first step is to take the lids off and go ahead and start to drain the pond. In order to drain the pond, I used three 44-gallon Rubbermaid trash cans. 
I also used a bunch of different various transports and um, containers that I have in the house that I use for this kind of stuff. So I went ahead and drained the water and as soon as I had a transport filled up, I went ahead and put both sharks in the transport. Now, a quick note about the transport, you should always have a source of air so that it puts oxygen back into the water and allows for a little bit of flow. Sharks don't actually breathe water. They use their gills to extract the oxygen from the water. So you wanna make sure, especially in a stressful situation like this, that they're in something where they're comfortable and they have a good supply of oxygen. Now, one thing that's unavoidable from my experience is when a shark gets stressed, they'll actually release a stress hormone into the water. So make sure that when you fill up a container like this, such as a holding container, that in the end, when you're done, you do not put this water back into the pond. Once they were in there and they were comfortable, we went ahead and drained the rest of the pond. And then once I took out the majority of the rocks, um, if not all of them, besides a couple little ones, we were actually able to push this from one side of the house to the other. Now, the pond without anything inside of it weighs about 100 pounds, so I definitely had at least 50, 60 pounds of sand in there, maybe more. I don't know. It's been a long time since I put that sand in there. But with the sand and the pond and some of the rocks, um, it wasn't the easiest thing to push, but with two people, it wasn't too difficult. So once the pond was placed where I wanted it in the room and I had my storage cabinet and my other little cabinet in there, uh, we went ahead and started to refill it. And once the water level was high enough so that we could put the sharks and the rocks back in, went ahead and put the sharks and the rocks back in, finished topping it off, and then I went to go turn on my canister filter. Now let's talk about this canister filter for a minute. A lot of people are really against them. I think they're great because they provide a lot of biological filtration, and that's essential when you have large animals like this that can produce a lot of waste. Marine Land is typically my go-to. I have one that's hooked up to my freshwater tank in my office. I absolutely love it. This one, however, this one has given me so many problems. I think this is my second or third one. And after a couple of years, the top just won't open. You, you can open it, but you're gonna most likely destroy it and break it while you're doing so. So um, I did some research and I ended up getting this Fluval canister filter and I absolutely love it. I'm very happy with it. In the meantime, I'm running both of these and I'm running them for about a month or so. And this just allows the Fluval canister filter to go ahead and get established with all of the good beneficial bacteria that I've got in my system already so that when I do take away the marine land one, it'll be fine. So now that everything's nice and moved and the sharks are good and they're happy and they're healthy in their home. I originally wanted to do something with this surfboard on the wall. Uh, the guy who sold me this house left it for me and it's just a really cool surfboard. It's pretty old. Um, I just like the way that it looks, but I wanted to do some type of a memorial for my other sharks who have since passed. So I came up with this idea instead. I went ahead and took four pictures from the four sharks that I had the longest and I printed them out on some sticker paper, cut the sticker out, and then I placed it on these little wooden pieces that I found online. So I actually covered the Rubbermaid 300 gallon stamp that they have on the front and I replaced it with four of these wooden panels. In the middle of these four, I went ahead and placed the one that looks a little bit more decorative, that's just a different shape. And I put the Shark Pond sticker on there with my four sharks that are no longer with us. And then I went ahead and added my Redneck Edition emblem, just for, you know, a little personalization touch there. And there you have it. If this is your first time watching my content, please make sure that you go ahead and check out my Why You Shouldn't Buy These Sharks video before you go ahead and make the decision to purchase these as pets or acquire them from anywhere. Um, these sharks are great. They brought me a lot of joy over the years. I've been keeping them and researching them and caring for them since I was 16 years old. I'm gonna be 39 next month, so it's been a while. I took a break in college, but if you're interested and you wanna understand exactly what you're getting into, go ahead and check that video out. I also offer a course that you can purchase on my website. If you go to aquaparel.com, click on the online courses link, it'll take you right to it. Although, you know, like I said, this is not the prettiest setup, this is probably the most efficient. Um, from what I've found, there's also bigger stock tanks that you can purchase. So anything you want to know, let me know in the comments below, and I'll catch you in the next one.